Hey, what is up everybody? James Brandon here. In this video, I am going to go over an image that I thought for years had gotten away from me. This is an image that I took back in 2000, let's see, info 14, yeah, April of 2014. This was on a storm chasing trip that I was on, and I believe we were out in West Texas somewhere near Throckmorton, but I can't remember. I don't have this image geotagged, unfortunately but I believe that's where it was. So this was with the original Sony A7. It was a brand new camera to me. Um, if I go into lens correction in Lightroom, it doesn't even recognize the lens that was used for it because uh, it was just a kit lens that came with it. And I guess they don't have a profile for that anymore. So this is an old image. Um, it's been in my portfolio for a long time. And if you have read the article that accompanies this video over on Topaz Lab, I will um, include a link to that uh, below in case you were just seeing it here. But um, this was an image that I was so excited about. Uh, I, we were storm chasing and this storm was passing over us and it was kind of dying out and it was just dumping lightning all over the place. I mean, every few seconds it seemed we would get a huge lightning strike or these anvil crawlers that would just go across the sky. It was nuts. It was raining and I was testing out all this crazy new technology in this new Sony A7 full frame mirrorless camera that was just revolutionary at the time. I was so excited because it had this focus peaking feature on it and I was watching the back screen on the camera. I was doing long exposures. Um, I believe I was doing either 30 second or just in bulb mode. It looks like this was a 30 second exposure. So I would just, you know, wait for a car to come down the road. I would trip the 30 second exposure and then I would just take 30 second exposure after 30 second exposure, just hoping that I would get a really good lightning strike. And when this one struck and when others would strike nearby, the lightning would come down across the, the LED screen on the back and the edges of it would glow red from the focus peaking. So I was pretty confident at the time that everything was in focus. But it, when this one happened, you know, I saw the same thing. I saw the red glow around the edges of the lightning and I was literally jumping up and down in joy and just, I was so ecstatic because, I mean, look at this scene. You've got a perfect car trail coming all the way across the road. You have this massive multi-level, multi-tiered lightning strike that's just coming down and striking the ground. And um, it was just an amazing scene. And it was so loud. It, you know, shook my chest after it happened. And we were just all ecstatic. I was with two other guys. We all got very similar shots. And the whole drive home, because this was probably... I think three to four hours away from home, we were all just talking about how we couldn't wait to edit this image. So I got back home, I pulled it up on my um, <laughs> my iMac, and this is what happened. I, the image came up, I zoomed in, and my heart just sank because it's not in focus. And if you come down here to the bottom, you can really see that, how it's just soft. You know, it's just it's just out of focus enough to where if you give it any level of scrutiny, it just doesn't hold up. So I couldn't really post it online. I couldn't post it on my blog or any websites. And I just had to like let this one go, which was very, very hard for me. Um, I, <laughs> I saw the image on my screen, my heart sunk, and I kind of just went to bed, <laughs> kind of uh, mopey. <laughs> and uh, it was not a great night. So um, I kind of just forgot about this image for a long time and I started coming up with ideas for, uh, for this video, for this article for Topaz. And I, I thought like, are there any images that, you know, just were slightly out of focus and this one came to mind. So I decided to dig it up and run it through Topaz, uh, sharpen AI and just see what happened. And I think, uh, you can probably tell by the fact that I'm using it for this video, <laughs> that uh, it was a, a pretty good result. So um, Topaz is just incredible. They they have decided to kind of just focus on the things that they know that they can do best. And the things that they don't do the best, they let other people do it. And I think that's a great concept. You know, they're not putting out any subpar products. They're only focusing on the things that they know. And um, there are other companies that know other things and they kind of just stay in their lane. And I, I think that's a, a pretty novel approach. So. Anyways, let's hop into this image. So again, we're in Lightroom. 
there's not a really a whole lot that we need to do to this image. But I think, um, you know, for starters, it's a very dark scene, obviously. It was shot at night. So we'll bring up the shadows a little bit and see if we can just get a little bit of detail in the foreground here. So I think that's good. We have a little bit more detail in the grass here now, but nothing uh, too crazy. We're not introducing any haloing effect um, on the horizon, are we? Maybe a little bit, but it doesn't look too bad. Um, you do want to be careful with that. So maybe we'll stop around 65 to 70%, somewhere in there. All right, um, let's increase the exposure just a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy here. Bring the highlights back and see if we can bring some more detail into the sky in this area right here. I'm noticing that we've got a pretty big dust spot uh, right here, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll just increase our brush size here, give it a little pop, and that should be it. Let's see. Let's increase the size. Woo, not that big. Right about there should do it. Hit H to hide that and make sure it's gone. And it is. So that's done. And then there is a natural kind of purple hue to this image from the lightning strike, which I always think is, is pretty awesome. <laughs> so I really want to accentuate that. Um, so I'm going to bring the vibrance up here until we really start seeing that purple color in the sky. Obviously, you don't want to go too far like this because it starts looking cartoonish. But if we pull it back here around 60 or 70, I think we'll be in a good spot. Uh, bring the saturation up a little bit more. You have to be careful with saturation, though, because that, that will really take it over the edge quickly. Vibrance is more like a scalpel, I always say, where saturation is like a, uh, a hammer. It just takes all the colors and cranks them up. And what you can see here is that I, I think we've got the sky to a pretty good place here. I might bring it back just a little bit, actually. But I'm not liking what it's doing to the car trails here. They're just a little bit too bright for me. So I'll come down here to HSL, saturation, and I'm just going to dial these reds back a little bit. I like to always go too far and then kind of just go back and forth until I kind of land on something that I think looks good. So maybe around like negative 10 here is where we'll stop. All right, and you can see here on the zoom in that we've really got a definite problem with focus here and it's just not sharp so sometimes with images if, if the image is really too far gone like I would say this one is if you sharpen it in Lightroom first and then send it into Topaz sometimes it'll do a little bit better job because you're giving it at least something almost like something to catch on to you know like if if you thought about like a um, you know, like a sheet of ice that you can't grab anything onto. But if you kind of take like a, a, a knife or a chisel or something and create some scoring marks across the ice, you get some traction. <laughs> and I think that's what this will do is, you know, we'll, we'll sharpen it a little bit in Lightroom and then that'll give Topaz something to grab onto and then really go to work on making this image look better. I'm not going to go far. I'm just going to, you know, add a little bit of sharpening. I'm going to increase the radius on it to like 1.2 pixels and I'm going to make sure that it's masked out and not being applied to the rest of the image. So I'm going to hold down option, which is going to give us this white looking uh, screen, which is just an indication of what the, the mask is doing. And I'm going to increase until I see that it's really just being applied to the lightning strike. So anything that's white is being sharpened. Anything that is black is being left alone. So I think probably right around here will give us the effect that we're looking for. And again, the image is still not sharp. We can see that <laughs> in this, uh, this uh, preview window right here. So I think that's it. I think that's all we really want to do. Um, chromatic aberration is not going to be a real issue in a scene like this. Sometimes I always just click it because I, I think it's good to apply to any image just in case. Uh, but I'm pretty <laughs> positive that it's not doing anything here. Regardless, uh, we'll go down, and I think that's all we want to do with this image um, in Lightroom. So now I'm going to right-click the image. I'm going to hit Edit In and do Topaz Sharpen AI. And we'll edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments and click Edit. And I'll see you over there.
Okay, so here we are inside of Topaz Sharpen AI. We've got the image right here, and I can see that it's already looking a lot better, but I haven't really done anything. I just opened the image up, and it's on standard motion blur normal. Now, I am confident that this was not motion blur. I think what this was was it was raining, and what happened was, you know, we would the lens on the camera would accumulate enough water to where I was seeing water spots show up on the image and I could see them through the viewfinder when the lightning struck. So I had a cloth in my pocket and I would pull that out and I would wipe down the front of the lens as lightly as I could. But this was a zoom lens and uh, it was a zoom lens that kind of telescopes out as you zoom in or out. It was a cheap kit lens that just came with the camera. There weren't a lot of lenses, lens options out available at that time because this was literally a brand new camera with brand new technology. And I think what happened, I actually know what happened was when I went to wipe down the front of the cloth, I pushed the lens in a little bit, which threw it out of focus. Um, so this is not motion blur. This is simply out of focus slightly. But because it was a very, very dark black sky, um, against a very, very bright lightning bolt. The technology at the time, the camera just saw that heavy contrast and thought that it was in focus and indicated it through the focus peaking feature. So I could go down here and just click out of focus, uh, very blurry or something like that. But what you can also do is come over here to the smart feature and just let it kind of look at the image and decide what it wants to do. And okay, that's choosing standard for us and that might actually work so why don't we just go here and zoom in a little bit we'll go to a hundred percent zoom and I mean look at that like these bolts right here especially on the side are nice and sharp now like that's just crazy to me like if we go to the side to side view here we can see here that if we go here and look right at this section right here and pull it across like that is a big big change and obviously there's a few like little um, artifacts here that don't look super natural but again we're dealing with an image that we know is probably not ever going to be blown up and hanging on a wall it's not going to be printed on metal um, in an art gallery or anything like that but we want to get this image to a point where i can share it online and you know post it on social media or my website um, you know, maybe not give the full resolution, but it takes an image from a throwaway to something that you can actually present on certain mediums. So if we go here and look at this section right here, it's even more apparent what it's doing. And I would say like this, the main part of the lightning bolt right here still looks a tiny bit soft, but not as soft as over here. So it's really doing a lot here. So, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to change and I'll just kind of you know, cycle through a few different options. So let's go down to auto, out of focus and see if like normal or very blurry um, will work. So we'll choose that one first. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's actually not as good of an outcome. If we do very blurry, let's see here. Let it crunch through and yeah, I actually think that uh, the, the smart feature worked because this did give us a good result, but there's a lot of artifacts here in these little um, these fingers that come out of the lightning bolt. And I think that standard might just be the way to go with this image. And that's what's fun about this is, you, you know, no image is the same. No two images are the same. So you really have to kind of just go in here and play around and your mileage may vary. You know, some images will work better than others, but the the algorithms that they've created for this are really quite spectacular when you look at this before and after i mean look down here this looks really good to me especially when you put it in perspective of what we're trying to do with this image so look right here like this is this is going from blurry literally going from blurry to sharp and you can see more detail in the clouds down here if we come over to the navigator over here and come down to the ground level we'll see what it's doing here and we're even getting sharpness added and created really um, in the foreground, which is just incredible. Look at the, the reflection of the water on the road here. 
as we go from before and after. I mean, that's just crazy to me. So we will just go back here. And, you know, I know this video is, is going towards the uh, long end. So I could go over, you know, how I would mask this. Um, but I think for now, I think we'll probably just stop here. Like this image looks great. I could go through the trouble of masking, but the noise, what, what Topaz Sharpen AI does is it will sharpen, but it'll also add some denoising feature, but the denoising isn't AI driven in this. So it's kind of just being blanketly applied. And again, if I really, really cared about this image and wanted it to hang somewhere, I would go in and really go in on a pixel level basis and make sure it's perfect. But I just want to get this to where I can share it and not feel like it's a crap image. And I think I've done that here. So um, let's go ahead and zoom out to fit. And if it's going to give us this warning. Okay, great. And here's our final image. So this looks really, really good to me considering where it came from. And I am happy to share this and I will do so as soon as I'm done and export this as a full image. And I hope you guys have learned something. There might be some shots of yours from a year ago. In my case, this was from eight years ago, which is just crazy to think about. It's been sitting uh, on my hard drives for eight years and Topaz has finally given me the ability through technology to revive this and make it uh, something worth sharing. All right, guys, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will talk to you guys later.